Hello, this is part 2 of the series on the ninth chord in the Schillinger system of musical composition. This tutorial discusses progressions with the ninth chord in diatonic harmony. There also is a somewhat longer score example that I will discuss in detail. I start with a recapitulation of the main characteristics of the 9th chord, as presented in part 1 of this series. You might want to skip this section and see the new content starting at around 3 minutes into the video. The 9th chord has two dissonant chordal functions, 7 and 9. It has a fixed 4 part structure and consists of the root 1, 3, 7 and 9. It must be used in root position with chordal function 1 in the bass. The dissonant functions must be properly prepared and resolved. And finally, in a diatonic harmony context we may use only isolated single ninth chords. These must be surrounded by either triads, S5 or 7th chords. This diagram presents the essentials. We see a D minor 9 chord with chordal function 1 the root in the bass plus the 3, 7 and 9 in the upper parts. The 7 and 9 create dissonant intervals with the lower functions and must therefore be carefully prepared and resolved. In this example we see preparation by suspended notes from the previous chord and resolution by stepwise descending motion into the following chord. This was discussed extensively in part 1 and here is how it sounds. Focusing on the resolution aspect, we see the stepwise descending motion in the upper parts. These become consonant chordal functions 3 and 5 in the following chord, here a G dominant 7 chord. So the progression may be labeled as S9 to S7 through a positive diatonic root cycle R5, a descending fifth. The dissonant 7, the F in the G7 chord is prepared as a suspended note. Alternatively, we may resolve the ninth chord into a triad, here G major. The root cycle again is R5, the voice leading yields closing contrary motion between the upper and bass parts. Listen to both resolution options. For the preparation we have three options, either a pair of suspended or stepwise descending or stepwise ascending notes. The example shows the preparation by suspended notes of the functions 7 and 9 in the A minor 9 chord. They start as consonant functions 1 and 3 in the preceding chord, the G major triad. So this progression is S5 to S9 at positive diatonic root cycle R7. This concludes the summary of part 1 and we will now look at diatonic chord progressions with the ninth chord. This diagram is an overview of the options for chord progressions in the Schillinger diatonic harmony system. We will use triads as 5 and two types of dissonant chord structures the 7th chord S7 with a single dissonant function and the S9 with the dual dissonant functions 7 and 9. Preparation must be done by starting from consonant functions 1, 3 or 5 in the preceding chord. The dissonant pitches are prepared through suspended notes, stepwise descending or ascending motion, here indicated as a slur and two arrows. Resolution is achieved by stepwise descending into a consonant chordal function. We may use the triad and seventh chord and their inversions in series, indicated here by the feedback loop arrow. So, a triad S5 may lead into another triad or a seventh chord. And the same holds for the seventh chord, as I've discussed in a dedicated tutorial on this channel that contains several progressions with series of seventh chords. When using the S9 chord, we will see the following progression patterns. Both S5 and S7 may lead into a 9th chord. 
This may be used as a single cord only that then resolves into an S5 or S7. You may want to go back to this diagram when writing or analyzing diatonic chord progressions that involve the S9. And now it's time for some examples. The first progression consists of 13 chords in the key of C major and containing 4 ninth chords. In the score we see the 4 part setting, the chord labeling, root cycles and voice leading specifics. These are the ninth chords that need preparation and resolution. All are in root position and contain chordal functions 1, 3, 7 and 9. The progression includes both positive and negative diatonic root cycles. Note the majority of positive numbers are 3 and are 5. Try and develop recognition of the oral quality of negative versus positive root cycles, in particular in a setting with the S9. There will be a number of these cases in the set of examples. Here we see two preparation principles, the suspended note and the ascending steps. We see single and double stepwise descending resolutions, always involving a positive root cycle. Triads and seven chords may be set as inversions with acceptable leaps in the bass part, although the descending leaps in the second inversions in measures 4 to 5 and 9 to 10 yield a suboptimal voice leading compromise. The example closes with a strong 2-5-1 cadence. In the voice leading, note the acceptable upward resolution of the 7 in the G dominant 7 chord, a case that was discussed in part 1 of this series. And here is the audio. The second progression is in D major, with 4 ninth chords in a total of 12. Again we see the fixed S9 chord structure and root position. The dissonant preparation principle is indicated above the staff. The example has only two negative root cycles, which are linked with the ascending stepwise preparation of S9. The voice leading uses the swapping of adjacent chordal functions 1 and 3. A technique I've mentioned a couple of times before. It is used here to improve the preparation of the following ninth chord. There is an unusual flat 9, the pitch G in the F sharp minor 9 chord. This would not be used as a static sustain chord, but with careful voice leading it becomes acceptable here. There is a deceptive cadence in measure 2 to 3 and again a strong closing cadence. Now with an incomplete closing triad. In measure 6 to 7 we see the irregular but acceptable ascending stepwise resolution of the major 7, the pitch F sharp, and in measure 7 to 8 there is the bass leap into the major 7 of the D chord. The next progression is in the key C minor and the relative E flat major, with 5 ninth chords in a total of 13. S9 structures are surrounded by triads S5 and 7th chords. Again, the preparation of dissonant functions 7 and 9 may be linked to a negative root cycle. Here we see an R-5 and later R-7. I included a few additional features. The example is modulating from the opening C minor key to the relative E flat major. Starting in minor, the voice leading is limited by the tendency of the 6th and 7th degree pitches. 
leading tone B natural should ascend, A flat and B flat should descend. Another complicating factor is the introduction of the mixolydian mode in the middle. The non diatonic pitch D flat must descend. The chord D flat major 9 in measure 8 is ambiguous, hinting at Neapolitan in C minor and flat 7 major in E flat. On such a small scale, some nasty progressions and weak voice leading, such as shown in measure 8 to 9, are almost inevitable. We see some more swapping neighboring chordal functions 1 and 3, and even a double swap in measure 7. Note how the modal lowered D flat is now moving in the wrong direction, only later to descend into the expected pitch C, a case of delayed resolution. Although we have a strong closing cadence, the voice leading is poor, with parallel motion in three parts. This could have easily been prevented by improving the voice leading in the bass part, putting the root B flat in the lower octave. And now let's create a somewhat longer application of the S9 in a musical texture at a relaxed tempo of 82 beats per minute. The key is A major, we will use an Euclidean rhythm, a ternary form ABA and combine diatonic with symmetric harmony. We will first look at the chord progression and four part voice leading. Note that the symmetric harmony section lies outside the scope of this tutorial. Here's the overview of the three sections. The outer A sections contain diatonic harmony, the bridge is based on symmetric harmony. The opening A section has three S9 chords. Preparation is by suspended notes, there is a descending stepwise resolution. In measure 3, the C sharp minor triad changes from first inversion into root position. Measure 7 as a passing 7th in the lead part, and in measure 1 there is an ascending bass leap into the 7 of the 3rd inversion F sharp minor 7 chord. The middle section is in the symmetric harmony system, using 6 tonics based on equal octave division into whole tone steps. The root cycle progression may therefore be labeled as R minus 2i, 2 ascending semitones. By mistake I've labeled the score with R plus 2i. The roots form a whole tone scale starting on F sharp. And the progression is an S5, S9, S7 harmonic sequence. There are two ninth chords that require preparation and resolution. Note the unusual preparation A into A sharp at the G sharp dominant 9 chord caused by the combination of the symmetric roots and variable chord structure. The triads change from root position to first inversion, S5 to S6. The progression opens with a delayed resolution of the dissonant 9, F sharp in the preceding E dominant 9 chord. The pitch is sustained until the descending step into the F natural of the B flat major 7 chord. The closing section returns to diatonic harmony with three ninth chords. We observe three cases of swapping adjacent chordal functions for improved voice leading. There's one negative root cycle R minus 5 connecting two minor chords. Listen to the audio played in a moment and note this characteristic unbalancing oral effect. There's a deceptive cadence 5 7 to flat 6 major in F sharp minor before the example closes with a 2 5 1 cadence with a triple suspension or appoggiatura voice leading. And here's the chord progression.
The next aspect is the rhythm. I decided to use an Euclidean rhythm pattern from which I selected two circular permutations and a polyrhythm created through a combination with a rhythmic diminution. Here's a graphic representation of the Euclidean rhythm E716, the most evenly distribution of a seven note attacks over a pattern with total duration of 16 time units. This yields the rhythm pattern 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 time units. There's more about Euclidean rhythms in a dedicated movie on this channel. Here's the same rhythm in staff notation. The time signature is 4-4, four, four, the time unit is the 8th note, so the pattern duration is 2 measures. Note that the result is a syncopated rhythm, played now by a pair of congas against a regular background. Equivalent Euclidean rhythm patterns are obtained through circular permutation. Here we see two such permutations from a total set of seven. Another technique is rhythmic diminution halving the note durations or, equivalently, using the 16th note as time unit. Simultaneously playing both patterns creates a polyrhythm, shown here. The original rhythm at 8th note time unit is in the lower staff, the upper staff shows the diminution at the 16th note time unit. Let's listen to this polyrhythm, where the original conga pattern is combined with a double speed cowbell rhythm. And now the complete example in a condensed score. This piece of music is 28 measures long, with ternary ABA form. You will hear the syncopated Euclidean rhythm in the bass guitar, the plucked acoustic and strummed electric guitar, and in the drums, in particular in the snare, toms and hi-hat. The chord progression voice leading, as discussed before, returns in synthesizer pads. Finally, there's additional musical elements for electric piano, marimba, and the sustained note high violin part. This concludes our two-episode series about the nine-chord in diatonic harmony. 
we saw the correct handling of the two dissonant chordal functions 7 and 9. The S9 has a fixed chord structure and must be used in root position. It must be preceded and followed by either a triad S5 or a 7th chord. The 9th chord has a unique sound and character that has great potential in relaxed or slightly melancholic mood music. If you're unfamiliar with the Schillinger system of musical composition, your next step might be to watch the two nomenclature movies on this channel. The dissonant chord types S7 and S9 in diatonic harmony are discussed in great detail in a set of three tutorials. A more advanced use of higher tension chords, such as the S9, is presented in the hybrid harmony set of movies. Please subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment or a suggestion for new movies below. Share this video and visit my website for more content or support my efforts. Thanks for watching.